Okay, on to the next bit. The flower does have a grub screw on. It's just that like before I was showing you the wrong side. So hopefully you can see there's one there. The reason I took it off is at the moment this is still flopping about, which we'll get on to fixing it later. But with this on at least, it's in the way of the boiler. Now on the previous engine I actually cut a bit away, which you have to do with lots of kits anyway, it's pretty normal, but I'm trying to avoid cutting it this time. And so obviously you can get it in if you do that and then push it down, but if you're going to fix that you're not going to be able to keep moving it. So I hope you can see, if that's cut down by about 4mm, it should go in without much of a problem. So for that reason, I'm going to use a smaller flywheel, once I've ordered one. Now I've done some work off camera. I'm actually going to try and experiment. If it doesn't work, fair enough, I'll show you how to correct it, I guess. This is just something I'm trying out. Now on the on the uh, prototype K2, that was the one with the uh, three foot bogey, it's a smaller one. This is obviously the three foot six one, as I mentioned before. Um, same principles apply, but on the other one I put contacts on, basically underneath, I just literally melted in some metal uh, wire rod, and then obviously bent it to the wheels. I'm going to try a different method this time. Also off camera, I've put in those bearings that I said I wasn't going to bother with because, you know, it's just better. Um, so yeah, let's just get to it. On the frame spacer, I've got some PCB strip that I've cut to shape, filed it, super glued it on. Okay. And on the other side, I've done the same thing. Here. Yeah. Also, this screw was sticking up. I trimmed it and filed it to shape, so it's not so obtrusive. Okay, and I hope you can see with the bogey. In fact, I'll just stick up the picture that I've done, already prepared. If you look at the picture, you should see that basically, um, it's just nickel silver scrap etch, two bits, basically glued next to each other, a little bit of solder on the top, filed smooth to, to produce like a rubbing plate. On that, I'm going to solder some contacts to each wheel tire. But instead of hard wiring it like I did on the prototype, with this one, what I'm going to try and do is basically, from these pads at the top, I'm going to make some springs. That's going to basically push downwards. So that's going to push this downwards to provide a little bit of spring and give it a good contact with the rail. That should help it run better, uh, derail less, and give better electrical continuity. The other thing is, the actual uh, pivot arm, again you don't have to build this with a pivot arm, but I am doing it on this one. But the wires are going to go either side of the pivot arm. So as it moves left, the wires are going to be pushing against the pivot arm, so you're going to have some centering, okay, which real things had. Um, so yeah, basically it's springing downward, springing sideways to level it, and electrical continuity. That is the experiment I want to try, the three in one. Will it work? Let's find out. Now this is very crude, I'll just bend some nickel silver 0.45mm rod, like that. Reason being, it's going to go in behind there, like that. If you can see. So it misses the axle. Visibility is a bit naff, I know, but you can I'm sure you get the idea. So it misses the axle, solder it to the pad at the front. The excess will then touch the rear wheel. Right. with me. Old Pico Cradle. They're coming useful. I was a bit uh, disgruntled buying it. I didn't really want to pay £4 something, but I mean, it's the price of an ice burger, isn't it? You don't notice it. It makes life a lot easier. So what's the best way to do this? It's going to be a little awkward. Right, your flux again. Don't spill it. Whoop. Could do with getting one of those jars. Right. I need about five hands, that's the problem. Not sure what the best way is to show you, but we'll get on with it. Uh, I've got it pinned with the middle finger. This is going to be difficult. I'm 
not very... I'm right-handed, so this is awkward. Little blob. Again, this is the least or non-corrosive flux, so it shouldn't cause any problems. It doesn't usually. Um, I've got solder left-handed as well. Or can I just swap it? Yes. Right. Let's just reposition that. Again, I'm not saying this is a way to do it. This is just a new way I'm trying out that I thought up. Because you can get away with just putting the contacts whoops, on the driving wheels, but if, you, if you've got them on all wheels, you're going to get better running. Try to mount your model. Right, it's got it. Now that you've got your first joint, it's easy. Hope you can see there, it's on the pad. I'm going to solder it to the pad, and then it's going to, I'll shape this for the rear wheel. Now when it comes to the wiper pickups, there's about a thousand different ways you can do it. So the only way I can uh, describe the best way to do it is to take it on a case-by-case -case example and, and experiment, sort of read a book and do what you want. So I'm going to try and get this so it's almost running level with the chassis. So now it's soldered here. I'm going to bend that downwards. Okay. And give it... Bend it slightly right and up, just a little bit, about here. Feels quite free. It's actually trapped behind the brake, the brakes. Sorry, not the brakes, the uh, leaf springs. Which is quite convenient, it keeps it nice, but it's still quite free. So I'm going to leave that there for now, that might be, might be just about right. Same for the other side. Use the oil on your fingers to advantage. Or don't. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's fiddly, isn't it? Awkward. Yay. Give it about five seconds at least. Yep. Okay. So 
Just see if we can get some more light in there. I've got the window open, but that's better. It's a bit yellowy, but never mind. Same again, Just bend it to the shape that you want. Okay. Now, I usually before I put the wheels on, actually spray spray paint them and primer. I forgot, so I might even take them off and do it later on, but I ain't gonna bother for now. At the moment, I would say it's still slightly tight. I mean, you're always gonna feel it slightly. It's not too much friction, but getting the balance right takes a bit of practice. But we're going to leave it there for now. Um, trip off, trim off the excess that's sticking out the sides. Yep. All right. Move the cradle. We'll also tweak it later. So now we're going to. Put some pickups on here for this wheel. I'm going to do it off camera because it takes a while to get the shape right. Okay, I've unscrewed the bogey and get yourself some of these self locking tweezers. Right, this is where we are. This tyre is now electrically joined to this nickel silver wire. Again, change the gauge if it's too much or not enough, it's up to you. Sold onto the PCB pad all the way through to this tyre, and as this piece of wire extends, it's also joined to this pad, which will be joined to this side of the bogey. Same for the other side. I've took this off because there's going to be springs from here going through the gap, pushing downwards. Okay, pushing downwards. So it's easy to take it off. Now to shape it, trial and error. And how much length we need, that's also trial and error. If the gauge wire isn't springy enough, then you just use a thicker gauge. Um, so how much do I think I need? I reckon we need about inch and a half to start off with. So let's just estimate it. About that. Sorry that visibility is awkward, but I need the cradle. doesn't matter so much if it's in the wrong orientation because you can just bend it once it's in position. It might have been an idea to just put the first bend in and not the second one. Never mind, it's not a big issue. bend these towards the center that one it's already pushing central but it might be too much but we're going to leave it for the time being
Like I said, this spring as it is, maybe too much, but we're going to find out. So, need to get these in between there. In between. Get a little screw. Do it back up. You can adjust how tight this is and how much twist it has. Right. So is that working? It needs to be bent inwards more. Right, faffed about with that. As you can see by the still, I've now put the little contacts on. In hindsight, I'd rather use 0.3 or 3.3 wire, but I don't have any, so they are a little bit tight, and at the moment they're not quite touching properly. But again, it takes a bit of honing. Um, as you can see, you've got the downspring, the side spring. Now it seems to be working. Stick your weight on. Seems pretty good. So, now we've got to get power to the motor. And this is going to be quite simple. Now these words are on track cutters. They still are technically, but if you look at the ends, you'll see they're a bit uh, chewed up. Right. Because I've kind of used them for things I shouldn't have done, so basically I've knackered them. But it doesn't matter too much because they make nice wire cutters. See? Now what I do, I twist the end a few times. Get a bit of this nice flux on. I always use this with electrics. Now, I don't actually bother using proper electrical flux. If you want to, you can. It's probably the best bit. I'll just find I can get by with this fine. So, whatever's easy for me works. All right, now that's tin in the end. It makes life easier. So, the motor tags are here and, and there. Focus, please. Awkward. Oh. This focusing is useless. <sighs> you get the idea that it's there and there, but if you're going to flower one in there, it's going to be in the way, so we're going to have to try and do it quite neatly. Now these have holes in as well, so they can, you can poke these through, which makes life a lot easier. So for that reason, I'm going to actually do it. Poking on there. And that's great, because it makes life so much easier. I don't even have to hold it. Brilliant. You know, don't overload the flux. You don't want it dribbling into your motor, do you? So just a touch there. That's it, let's go. Cut off about there. Whoa. 
best way to do things, is it? <laughs> well. Gonna make an identical one. This doesn't matter that it's a different colour. Doesn't matter one bit to me because I'm just going to paint it black anyway. And if you do DCC and you want to put your chips in and stuff, then, you know, go ahead. I plan to do DCC later, but not yet. Right. Two nice tin bits of wire. Great like this time, I think. Too short. Too short on that end. No worries. Make another one. Give it a tug. Right, that's on. Now, there's no crank pins, it's had, it's had no running in, there's no oil. Will it run? Okay, all I've done is just basically just the pickups on the wheel tyres. That's all I've changed. So. Needs a bit of weight to push it down, but I think you get the idea. For the middle wheel. Yep. So happy days. Now we need to change the, drub, the uh, grub screw. So not change it, tighten it up to see if it's actually going to move anywhere. Now, obviously, there's no crank pins on. Sorry, there is crank pins on. There's no uh, coupling rods on yet, so it's not like it's going to work amazingly. But hang on. Just tighten the grub. Well, make sure first your wheel. It's central, which it looks like it is, and then tighten the grub screw up. Some people teach to file a flat on the um, axle. Again, I don't tend to bother. It's up to you if you do it. And some things you won't be using grub screws, you'll have to use Loctite or something. So, obviously, the middle wheel's up in the air because of spring, so I'm going to put that back on. See if it does anything. Yep. So it's trying to move somewhere. Obviously there's no weight on the back, so I mean, ideally, if you push it down, it should move a bit easier. A bit more torque on it, wants to go. So, um, well now we know that's working, and the contacts are working, and we've done the roll test, Next thing for me is the crank pins and the uh, coupling rods, even. Sure. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, that'll have to wait until the next video. So, thanks for watching.